Okay. I'm Amir Weidman from Tel Aviv University, and I first thank Jacob for this big project. And I hope that uh, when Corona will be out, the project will continue. Um, okay. So um, I want to start with uh, explaining how I see the measurement problem. And uh, in fact, uh, the topic which I said, solution of measurement problem by, by many words, from my point of view, is uh, kind of obvious. Uh, but uh, I have difficulty to uh, persuade others. So I hope that during this hour, starting from far away, I, I will move forward to this uh, goal. Uh, I will talk about classical physics and will try to say that philosophically it's, uh, it's, it's good. Unfortunately, it's wrong. Then I will turn to quantum physics and say that if we don't perform quantum measurement, then it also pro uh, provides a good description of what we see around. Then I will come to many words. And uh, in fact, I will do it uh, with real experiment. I will split the world in two. I, um, long time ago, I, uh, I wrote a paper, a brief paper um, for a conference, uh, why I think the many words is uh, better than anything else. And I, I was giving, uh, uh, describing two experiments and uh, which I think that should lead, at least they led me to believe in many words. Experiment which I, I have been involved with. with. And I will split the word, and in one word, I will uh, describe one experiment. In another word, I will describe another experiment. And I hope I will have some time to summarize and to try to uh, bring together my ideas why I think that many words is uh, the best, by far the best explanation uh, or best solution of, of uh, the measurement problem. Um, I'm very far from accepting ideas in this uh, book of uh, Klaus Lanzmann, but I found um, the quotation uh, of Born uh, very useful. Probably, uh, I I'm, I'm tend to believe that he is right, that this is uh, maybe when uh, the measurement problem started. And um, the real kind of a point is, uh, we are not aware of any experimental clue to the effect that there are internal properties of atoms that enforce some particular outcome. Born considers scattering, and he says that uh, we don't have a theory which should tell us what exactly will happen, only the probability. Now, I think the, one of the most influential places where the measurement problem is formulated is a uh, paper by uh, Tim Mudlin, and uh, he says that uh, if we assume that quantum mechanics is fine and uh, only fine, uh, then uh, there is this uh, inconsistency of having uh, determined uh, outcomes of measurements. Now, I don't think that uh, measurement is a good candidate for a primitive of a scientific theory. So, um, but um, so maybe I, uh, I've, I found even uh, more agreement uh, with uh, David Wallace. He's uh, formulated the measurement problem, applying the quantum algorithm to the bare quantum formalism produces extremely accurate predictions about microscopic phenomena from the result of measurement process to the boiling points of liquids. But we have no satisfactory formulated scientific theory which reproduces those predictions. This was in his paper, uh, the quantum measurement problem state of play. Now, maybe it was really kind of a rhetoric question about uh, no satisfactory theory, because then he said the solution to, of the measurement problem then is a satisfactory formulated scientific theory satisfactory formulated that is relative to your preferred philosophy of science. 
So I really believe there is such a satisfactory formulated and satisfactory theory. And uh, this is uh, the many word theory. And um, I think it's important this another remark of David. Uh, why call it the measurement problem? Because traditionally it has been the measurement process which has been taken as a source of macroscopic superposition. Macroscopic superposition, this is a key issue in measurement problem. So let's look on my formulation of measurement problem. Unit evolution of quantum theories in some situation, uh, for example, quantum measurements, to a superposition uh, of macroscopically different state of macroscopic object, which we do not experience. This is a problem. And solution is a many word interpretation. Our duplicates experience them in parallel words. The, the many word interpretation is satisfactory formulated satisfactory scientific theory. Satisfactory formulated probably is a meaning here that the standard approach, uh, we don't know exactly when measurement happened. So uh, concept of measurement is prob problematic. But satisfactory for me it is a theory which uh, um, which has this good property uh, that it doesn't have action at a distance and it, uh, and, it, and it is deterministic, like classical physics. So consider classical physics. World is position of particles moving in space and uh, they, uh, they are motion affected by fields again, created by particles, and uh, again, there is a locality. The particle create fields, these fields uh, propagate, and then act on other particles, we get acceleration. Uh, so, it, and everything is local, everything deterministic. Sometimes uh, there are experiments uh, which look probabilistic, but it's because we don't know exact, exactly the initial condition of the experiment. For example, if I send a, kind of a billiard ball through a, to a place which has small holes, I know it will bounce to one, one direction. But if I will send to the, same, uh, to the same wall which has holes, a small particle, sometimes it's passed through and sometimes it's reflected. But I can understand exactly what's happening. Um, these probabilistic outcomes of experiment because I cannot really uh, put exact direction to my particle. So sometimes it bounces and sometimes it goes to a hole and it goes through. So everything looks clear. In fact, uh, at the end of 19th century, physicists Many physicists thought that uh, physics is finished and trying to explain everything well. Okay, it's a citation from Maxwell. The only occupation left to men of science uh, is to carry uh, measurements to another place of decimals. And uh, in similar, uh, slightly later, uh, Michelson tell us that uh, fundamental laws um, and facts of physical science have all been discovered. So what's left is uh, at that time, uh, of, it's just look on six place of decimals for new discoveries. Um, classical physics uh, can explain things. If we look on a tiger, and we can uh, imagine the tiger made of atoms and we can look more and more closely. Finally, this is kind of atom center. We can believe that uh, this is a good description because uh, we see that big objects, small objects behave similarly. So we can believe in classical physics. Unfortunately, it's turned out to be wrong. And in the beginning of 20th century, several uh, experiments have been performed. No way to explain it by um, classical physics, like body radiation, stability of atom, and then stability of any all matter. 
uh, but maybe some things which close to what I started is uh, interference experiment. If I have an interference, deterministic interference experiment, I, I have a Max Zender tuned Max Zender interferometer, it always come to the same place. I send it again, it's again go to the same place. There is no explanation with classical physics of this experiment. Because sometimes I know it should go through, sometimes it goes through a hole. And in every place, it's supposed to have 50% chance to come here and here. Uh, but we can tune interferometer, and uh, today we can send single photons, and they always will come here. Grandjer and Taspik, I think, eight, uh, 1970 something. So quantum physics uh, resolves this difficulty. Uh, this deterministic experiment can be explained by the fact that quantum physics tells the particles are waves. So we send uh, in this experiment waves, waves can interfere and we can destructive interfere here and this, uh, here and never get clicks, constructive interference here and we get always clicks. Now, I think quantum mechanics explain not just this experiment, but essentially everything, uh, al almost everything else. Today, whatever we can calculate and whatever we can measure, we see an agreement. And sometimes with numbers, un unbelievably many decimals. Here, I think it's like nine or 10 decimals, latest experiment. And this includes all kinds of uh, uh, understanding of standard model, which goes beyond, beyond quantum mechanics. If we go just, uh, um, if we look on uh, electromagnetic quantum theory, we get agreement even better. Now, one can say that quantum mechanics cannot explain reality. We have this uncertainty principle. So uh, how, how we can talk about objects localized in space moving from one place to another. Uh, but this is really, if you put numbers, there is no real problem. Uh, delta X delta P is uh, like uh, five times 10 to the minus 33 in MKS units. If we'll take kind of a small person of 50 kilogram, uh, it uh, makes uncertainty for his position and velocity uh, limited by 10 to the minus 34. And if he lives 100 years, which is like uh, uh, less than 10 to the 10 seconds, uh, then he can be during all his life localized up to 10 to the minus 12 meters. And not just person, if it's, uh, just a small grain of sand can also be very well localized. And uh, so the picture, this, the quantum picture, the, the fact that uh, according to quantum mechanics, there is no real position, uh, uncertainty, it's not a problem. If we don't perform quantum measurement, as we saw that Tiger can be explained classically, we can also believe that it can be explained quantum mechanically. Um, it has whiskers, it has, we can go to even atoms. Now atom of course um, can, due to uncertainty, I will not stay all the time in the same place, but we can think that maybe electrons around, they are uncertain and it's okay that they are uncertain. And maybe they make potential for atoms and these atoms may be also pretty stable and, and, and sit in particular places. Now, let's uh, consider this situation. We do not perform quantum experiment and we uh, hope that nature doesn't do it by itself for a while, for example. No photo multipliers, Geiger counters, uh, single photon detectors. Um, no uh, word splitters of iPhone. And uh, Nicola showed that if you use your iPhone uh, camera for a low light situation, it's also kind of a, a random generator. Don't do this. 
So if we do not perform this quantum experiment, then uh, we, we can consider that the whole universe is just one word, no splitting. This one word, uh, the wave function of this one word can be written as a product of wave function of all big objects. All macroscopic objects are also necessarily um, uh, in a product state. In particular, we have our tiger. This tiger by itself made of all kinds of elements which uh, are well localized. You can look on one whisker. It's also well localized. Now this one whisker has some variables describing the position, let's say center of mass, maybe uh, angular position. It also has some relative co uh, coordinates in atoms. This relative thing might be entangled, but as the collective um, variables describing a whisker of a tiger is in the product state. So we have electrons in atoms and other things entangled. We need this entanglement to explain superconductivity, so stability, uh, and many, many other things. We need entanglement. But all macroscopic objects are described by well localized wave packets. They are localized in three dimensions, maybe atoms too. So in this type of universe, kind of very special universe, which has just one world, not because of some special theory collapse or anything, just because uh, it happened to be. Um, then we can reconstruct our classical world. There is maybe other way to see this classical world. If we look on the, uh, uh, three dimensional function, expectation value of where the density, let's say, of hair molecules. This will show us three dimensional picture of tiger's whisker of any other things. So we can reconstruct for this universal wave function, the world wave function, uh, our classical world. So I, you probably all see this cartoon. Uh, I'm not sure what is the problem with classical apparatus. Uh, the problem is with quantum apparatus. If we have a quantum measurement, they will break classicality. Uh, classical big measuring devices are not dangerous to any, to any of the world. So it's important not uh, if we want to keep classical world, we shouldn't have quantum measurement apparatus. Quantum measurement apparatus of this type of kind. If I send a quantum particle through some barrier, through some beam splitter, sometimes we get it here. Deterministic, we can, uh, we can do this if we have two of them, and we tune it to deterministic experiment like Max Zender. If it's always start here, end up here, no problem. This we can do, this will not, this is not dangerous for, for splitting the world. Because uh, we know waves, they come, they make interference and we still have one world. If I have half of this experiment, this is dangerous because this wave split, and invariably, we get these two clicks. This is what we don't want. Because there are macroscopic devices which became, uh, which uh, shows macroscopically different results. If I want uh, to consider it maybe it's more, uh, uh, more realistically, this is kind of a scheme of photomultiplier. I send a single photon to a photomultiplier. There is one here, one here. In fact, one it's enough to have a problem. So I send this, uh, what I observe, sometimes one clicks, sometimes another click. But my theory doesn't show this. 
There is no such thing in my theory. The only thing which I have in my theory is something of this kind. That the wave goes here and there. So uh, something of this kind, in fact, uh, there is in uh, Tel Aviv uh, laboratory. In fact, this is a picture of its first uh, version. Uh, and again, it's not exactly this experiment. We have uh, no single photon source. We have a laser, attenuated laser. We do have single photon detector, just one. And depending on exactly what time window it uh, uh, finds this uh, low intensity light, this is a quantum um, effect which splits the world. So let's do this. Um, clearly, I have internet connection, uh, so uh, maybe I yes, uh, I can go to my word splitter, which appears in my homepage, and then there is a link, and it will operate um, the quantum random generator. So let me uh, change the sharing. Oops, share. I hope I will be able to start it again. Uh, now share. Ah. One moment. Um, today's, uh, let me, sh let me share. I hope uh, you see my uh, homepage. Homepage, there is a quantum word splitter. This is a quantum word splitter. And now I can split uh, to uh, four words, six words, five words. I have to click. I just want two words. So I click here. And I get choice one and choice two. The choice, it will be the experiment which I want to describe you. One of them, it's interaction-free measurement. So I will write IFM. And another one, it's teleportation. So I will write, let's say, tele. And now I will go here and will uh, make split. And then there is the interface which make a connection to quantum random generator. And uh, I really believe that uh, we all will see one of them, at least now it will, it would looks like, and we will see one, but I'm, I'm really absolutely sure that there, is, there will be a parallel world in which I will see the other option and I will uh, explain to you other experiment. So let's could make split. Okay, so we are in a, Tele words where we explain teleportation experiment. So again, let's stop share and come back to my presentation. Um, share screen. I think it is. Uh, Sorry. Um, so let's go to teleportation. The first was interaction free measurement here. Um, ah, Jerry, stop. Something doesn't work. Sorry. Okay. So let, let's. If I hope. Sorry. Um, it does. Uh, is it okay? Everyone sees the teleportation chamber. Yep, it's showing up. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, teleportation, it's, uh, if we look on Star Trek, something of this kind, and uh, this is really nonsense. This is science fiction. 
matter cannot jump in space time. Uh, if, uh, if I'm here, and uh, so it, there is no way that I will disappear here and will appear here. The center of mass of uh, universe should jump. No, I don't believe it. But quantum mechanics tell us that all electrons are the same, all protons are the same. So what's important about me, it's not my electrons, it's my wave function. I am the wave function. So if I want to be teleported, all what should be done, is just in a teleportation of my wave function. And um, this is, has been achieved. First, this doesn't contradict this uh, matter jumping. And uh, this has been achieved by uh, uh, this idea came relatively late. And uh, I was pretty upset because when I, when I read the abstract, I knew how to do this, uh, but I didn't ask the question. So, and it's extremely simple. If I have a spin half particle, all Alice and Bob have a EPR pair shared. Alice and Bob far away. Clearly this EPR doesn't have information about this particle. Alice get the particle in a known quantum state. She doesn't know what the state. If she knows, it will help. But anyway, she doesn't know what the state. She uh, takes her particle of EPR pair. This particle performs what's called Bell measurement, which can have four possible uh, outcomes. So this is two bits. She sends two bits to Bob. Bob makes some manipulation here and um, the state of Alice moves to, uh, is moved to Bob. I think it will take me like a half a minute to explain how it works. The original state is this particle state and this EPR state. This state, the same state exactly, can be rewritten in another way. If I will take particle one and particle two and will write it in Bell basis, Bell basis is some entangled state of, of these two particles. Then, depending on which uh, Bell state is here, on the right side, it will be really this, the original state, which we come here, may be rotated. This is the original, and this is uh, three possible rotations. Now, if we rotate them back, we know in every way how to rotate them, we get the state. Um, spin half particle, it's not me. Uh, there are some continuous variables in my body. So to teleport a person, we need continuous variables teleportation. And uh, so I found a way how to generalize it to continuous variables. Um, something pretty similar, instead of EPR uh, singlet, EPR bomb, the original EPR state and then some variation of uh, Bell measurement. And uh, now, of course, there is my, I need more, much, a lot of information for if I take for every atom, every molecule, I, um, I, it's, I can tele teleport every molecule. Quantum mechanics will tell me I will be teleported. teleported. I don't have to, uh, there is no need to teleport altogether. Every, just, Teleportation of every particle will immediately teleport uh, the whole body, even if it's entangled. Now, I see a paradox because I thought that I am more than 10 to the 28 numbers. Uh, but the paradox here maybe is not so clear. The clear paradox, I think, in the original teleportation. In the original teleportation, I bring to Alice a quantum state. To define the quantum state, I need two angles. Before this, she didn't have this state. Alice sends to Bob only two bits and Bob gets the quantum state, which requires two numbers, technically infinite amount of bits. So this is, what I see is a paradox of teleportation. 
how one can, how one can send um, two angles just by sending two bits. So this is our teleportation story. We perform, we perform the bell measurement. And after the bell measurement, essentially, the qubit is already there. Maybe this, maybe this, maybe this, depending on the outcome. So this is happened if we believe in one word. In one word, Alice does something and immediately transfers this angle here. It needs some additional information to restore exact angle, but angle is already at both sides. This is very paradoxical. What many words tell us? Many words tell us we have a mixture of all of them. All words are present. When this measurement is performed, all outcomes happen. So uh, here we have a mixture of all these states. Quantum mechanics tell us that this mixture is equivalent, e equal to the original mixture. What is the original mixture? We had the EPR state. So the EPR state is, uh, um, is also every particle is a mixture. It's the same mixture. So essentially nothing happened during the Bell measurement. No change whatsoever, no action at the distance. Uh, this was before, after exactly the same local description of Bob's particle. Now, Bell, Bell measurement changed nothing on Bob's side in physical universe, which includes all four words. The two bits tell us in which world we are. And uh, when this, we transfer this information, uh, then uh, in every word in the end, we can uh, we obtain uh, the quantum state, which was here, there. But the main thing, no action at a distance. If we consider all words together, there is no paradox. What was sent in teleportation is just information about which word it is. So it's kind of strange thing that non-locally I can perform measurement here and split the word. The word is a non-local concept to different quantum states here. Okay. Now, what is happening now, I really believe that in parallel world, there is, uh, I gave a different part, uh, different explanation of interaction three measurement. Now, um, there are these two words, definitely at least two words. In one word, I explained teleportation. In another word, I explained interaction free measurement. Clearly, um, they do not disturb each other. There are many microscopic uh, objects, uh, me and all audience and everyone that uh, are in uh, very different states. There is no any kind of idea that one can perform interference between these two options. I don't need any decoherence with environment. We microscopic objects involved in this experiment uh, are definitely enough to, to split the world into. Okay, so let's come back to a, uh, maybe summarizing, repeating, or uh, saying again why I think it's a solution. When we have a textbook quantum mechanics, textbook quantum mechanics, we have Schenger equation and collapses at measurement. This is our world and it's every, this part, it's collapsed to this uh, measurement uh, result, this result, this result, this result. Let's say this is the measurement which I performed, splitting the world in one in which uh, teleportation and one in attraction free measurement. According to at least my understanding of a Neumann understanding or presentation 
of textbook quantum mechanics. The wave function is the whole story. All is psi. It collapses every time a measurement is performed. We need the Born rule, otherwise we will send signals faster than light. Um, and again, the postulate is that the psi, this collapsed psi, is what it is. So our experience is part of the psi, and we experience our experience explained by this psi. And uh, what I said before, this the, this world now is a collapsed world. This is not a tale that. There were no quantum measurements. There are quantum measurements, but also there is a collapse. And this collapse does the same job. The word is, uh, the, is written in quantum wave as a product state of macroscopic quantum object. There are entangled parts, the relative parts, but also there are kind of collective part describing the objects themselves. They are product state and they are states in three dimensions. We need entanglement to explain stability, to explain um, why atoms stable, why solid stable. But the entanglement is not for macroscopic object. There is no entanglement in macroscopic object. Therefore, we can have this normal uh, picture uh, of life in three dimension. Macroscopic object interact in three dimension. Now, let's look on many words. Uh, pretty similar, only there is no collapse. So ontology is a wave function. It's not this partial wave function, the collapsed one, the whole wave function. And uh, the connection between ontology and experience, I like to be a parasite on a uh, textbook quantum mechanics. Uh, I will say the connection is through a textbook connection. My experience uh, of a world is completely specified by the textbook collapsing wave function. So this is how I will decompose my universal wave function. I will decompose it as sum of wave function, which, which all uh, look like collapsed wave function. I don't believe in collapse. Collapse is really bad. This is what I don't think is satisfactory um, scientific theory. Uh, but uh, it's just I use this concept to make my decomposition. If I don't want to be a parasite on uh, um, textbook quantum mechanics, I just can make a postulate. I make a decomposition uh, to a wave function in which all macroscopic, every macroscopic object are well localized. Now it's vague, but all this is needed just to help me to explain my experience. It's kind of a social science. The physical science is this universal wave function. This evolves according to exact equation. Now there is this big issue which I'm Kind of agree that uh, one have to clear it up, and I believe that I do have understanding of it with self-location, uh, but uh, clearly I have no time uh, for it uh, for discussion uh, now. Uh, about in a week there will be a conference which can, can maybe advertise here, uh, and I will give a talk there and will concentrate there on this probability issue or illusion of probability issue in the many word interpretation. Okay, so what is really description of the world according to uh, um, standard textbook is this one. This is a wave function this branch is this teleportation branch in which I explain teleportation, the one which I give you lecture now. And um, this wave function explain experience of every of my experience, your experience, 
in this branch, in, the, in this branch, everything is well localized. The classical world is restored. So this option doesn't happen. This is many words. This is what I really believe. This exists and this exists. But again, there is a big, uh, the experience, again, experience, uh, experience in teleportation world according to this branch, experience in interaction free measurement world according to this branch. Exactly like in standard quantum mechanics. I think majority of physicists live uh, well with standard quantum mechanics and don't think that there are some problems. Uh, interpretation, collapse, whatever, they, they prefer not to ask questions. But everything can be calculated. Everyone with, agrees about this. The difficulty is this collapse, which is kind of action at a distance. It's random, but we don't see it. There is no, these words do not in, uh, interfere with one another. They different, they're, they're different enough. The, the there are many macroscopic objects which are macroscopically different. We do not the coherence of environment. It plays no role. Now, classical world, when we sit in particularly in our world and we, we describe it, this is, um, we can restore, we can, we can understand the classical picture. The molecules are well localized enough if we say uh, that they are quantum well localized or they're exactly localized as in Newton said, there is no difference in the picture. Maybe the coherence is needed if I want to take the whole wave function, the universal wave function. But I don't know why would I need it. I am now here. I have information, good information about my world. I, I know pretty much about this parallel world in which I uh, explained to you interaction free measurement. Maybe if I remember my previous splitting, I know it, maybe also something about this. I have very little information about the universal wave function. I can make some speculation, but I don't, I don't have it. So I don't, uh, there is no need for me to try to uh, find classical words out of the universal wave function, which uh, takes all branches together. I am aware only about few branches which are close enough. So, uh, what I would like you to remember from my talk. The measurement problem is not about uh, definition of what's measurement, eigenstate, eigenvalue or link or whatever. It's just there are situation in which um, a macroscopically different superposition of macroscopically um, macroscopic bodies are created and we do not experience them. This is a measurement problem and it, independent of any kind of formalism, how we um, put our theory. Quantum mechanics tell us, and this looks like kind of friction. But many words solve it because um, there is no contradiction to say that are all experiences in parallel. We do not see parallel um, experience, parallel words. It's not because uh, uh, they are not present. It's just because we are not built like this. If our evolution allows us to see only one picture. This is just two tigers together. And I, it's very hard to see that this is tiger. But, it, but if there are all this superposition, uh, if I if I try to uh, to listen to uh, requiem of Verdi and requiem of Mozart together, there is no way that, that which I can uh, appreciate uh, any one of them. Maybe somehow I can concentrate it here one of them. No way that I hear two. This is our property. Uh, there are local interaction, and this can explain why we can experience only. Uh, one macroscopic object at a time. And um, there is no really difference, even conceptually. Conceptually, 
by definition, my experience superwin on this wave function, which is exactly like collapsed wave function. So if physicists are happy with their collapsed wave function, um, they believe that this correctly explains the exper experiment and what they see. I will should be happy exactly in the same way. There is no any contradiction that there are all of them in parallel. They do not disturb each other. So I really believe that many art is by far the best solution of the measurement problem. But uh, for this, I think I need several more talks trying to say why, uh, what are the problems with others. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lev. Uh, so we actually have about, uh, I would say eight minutes or so. Uh, if people have uh, questions, please use the hand raising tool. You should be able to access it from the bottom stripe uh, of your Zoom window. It might be under the reactions button. Uh, and I will call on people in the order in which they've raised their hands again. Uh, if you have a question and we don't have time for it now, just hang on to it. I will remember that you raised your hand and we will come back to you in the final hour. Okay, so the first hand I have is from Javier. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. It was really interesting. So I would like to know uh, if, your, um, if your, the ideas you presented here are applied also to the movement of the planets. Uh, I'm still not quite sure, but maybe the, the Einstein loss could, could change a little bit of the of the detection of the movement in this case, or, or it could be applied also to the movement of the planets. So, so thanks. Every, all macroscopic objects, again, the main physics is just wave function of everything. And then we have to decompose it to macroscopic objects. Planets are very macroscopic objects. And I'm pretty sure that there are quantum events like supernova and takes Z time and other time. I'm pretty sure that uh, our planet uh, currently, uh, there are superposition of our planets in different place. Although I'm not, uh, I don't know in maybe enough. All, my, all, all what I know from cosmology uh, that I'm, I think it's very, very feasible that there is a complete mixture. If you look on the universal wave function, there is complete mess of uh, planets all over. But uh, in the moment uh, we have a planet is very macroscopic and uh, the light from, so we were, we live in particular world when the planet, where, where we see them. All right, thanks. Uh, if it's all right, let me move on to the next question, Charles. Yes, hi Lev, thank you for the talk. Um, I have a question concerning uh, teleportation. You seem to make a very clear point that whenever Alice was doing her bell measurement, nothing happened on Bob's side. You, you made it pretty clear. But then I'm puzzled by, okay, and the argument was because the superposition of the four alpha plus, beta, <laughs> alpha minus, beta, and so on, they give the initial uh, mixture. Uh, in terms of reduced density matrix. But then I'm very puzzled, how can you explain that then only two bits can then split Bob's world accordingly to this prescription? And let me just explain further, two bits are in fact exactly what's required to specify which of the four trench or branch Bob would be in, but two bits are clearly not sufficient to specify the angle in which Bob has to be split. I think you you are aware of uh, my unpublished paper, which I hope will be unpublished somewhat soon. Um, and also in this uh, ninety four paper, I kind of the, the idea was presented. There is non locality, unfortunately, in quantum mechanics. Maybe local theory will be better. There is no action at a distance, but non locality is present. Entanglement is non locality, and then this. Uh, Bell measurement split words. Words are non-local. So this, uh, all this operation of 
putting this information is because words are non-local and uh, because and this clever operation uh, of bell measurement of your your state uh, with another epr pair this is what make uh, kind of split this word in particular way that in every word as a, four words are created in an every word the, uh, this quantum state in Bob's side. In one of them, it's unchanged. In three others, it's rotated around X, Y, or Z axis. And, uh, but it's happened because of this uh, Bell measurement and because the concept of word is non local. I think I now understand. It's not the first time we discuss, and I now understand why you claim worlds are non local. So if I phrase you well, if I understand well, at, at one single trench, there would be some sort of non-locality because alpha and beta are now dead there. But if you take it as a mul, uh, yeah, if, if you if you could on one single world there will be non-locality, you would say. But then if you if you take the four of them together, then you get back the prescription of the reduced density matrix, and then you would say that globally there's no non-locality. So that's so why you would say that many worlds would be non-local, but single world would be. It, it, am I paraphrasing you? That's the opposite. The many words is local. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, if, this we is what on, I meant. if we look on all words together and we look on the local description, then whatever I do here, I cannot change there. No way. Now, but I can split the world and inside the world, things are kind of immediately ch changed and there are all this non, -lo non locality and randomness. If uh, because of there, are, there is a splitting of words which are non-local. But physics, physics describe all words together. So what as a physicist I think unacceptable is action at a distance on a level of all words together. And um, indeterminism on all words together. If I look all words together, everything deterministic and has no action at a distance. Thank you, thanks. Thanks for the talk. I see no more raised hands, but there's uh, a discussion happening in the chat window. Is would anybody in the chat window like to raise their hand and 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 bring this uh, out into a, a a verbal discussion? Oh, I do see a hand though. A ding. Um, hi. Um, I think uh, I did write a question in the chat, but it's not part of the discussion. Uh, so it's, please feel free. Go ahead. Yeah, please, please. Yeah, so uh, I wonder if uh, the many word interpretation is restricted to the Schrodinger equation formulation of quantum theory, or is it more general? For example, the standard model, as you mentioned, uh, explains almost everything, but that's formulated in, in, uh, in terms of a path integral. Is there a formulation of the many word interpretation in terms of a path integral? Maybe I should mention that David Wallace believes that if we'll go uh, to field theory, whatever, then we'll have some difficulties. I don't see it. Uh, I think that the problems which we, we have uh, with measurement problem are problem of quantum mechanics. And uh, so there are these things. We need the uh, superposition of macroscopic uh, different things, different outcomes, and we see just one. This is a problem. Now there are this other problem, what is the mass of particles and uh, how one kind of corrections and other things. These things physicists uh, make, uh, uh, in field theory, no one talks about collapse and does whatever he needs. We need this physics to explain all other things. The problem is with the results, in, indeed, in this kind of situation, a microscopic object became a microscopically different state. It has nothing to do with uh, going uh, to the more precise quantum mechanics, which also consider creation and annihilation of particles and maybe strings. And because we have no action at a distance, uh, I see uh, that it's very promising that we'll have no problem uh, going to uh, until the end and the com complete theory which explain everything. Just mentioning your past integral, there are a few people who take past integral as a kind of conceptual story. I think Feynman himself considered it as a mathematical tool, and I believe it's just mathematical tool. We, we calculate probability of what will happen using past integral. There is now doesn't mean that uh, all paths are taking in some uh, in some kind of sense. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks. So uh, unfortunately, uh, because of time constraints, we're going to have to, to pause questions for there, but I have made a note of everybody who has additional questions. I have Arcadius, uh, Marion, and Simon. If it's all right, if I can hang on to your questions until uh, the final hour, um, I want to make sure that we have an opportunity for our next speaker to be able to set up. Um, so I want to thank Lev again for a very interesting and thought-provoking talk. That was really wonderful. And thanks for all of your, your answers to the questions. Um, and just a reminder to everybody that, that this talk is being recorded and the talks will be posted to the YouTube channel uh, very soon after the workshop. So I'm gonna stop the recording now.